Hello everyone, this is your instructor in regulatory framework and legal issues in business and in this particular video, we will be discussing the obligations of the vendor. In this video, I was supposed to cover all the obligations of the vendor but since I wanted it to be concise in a sense, so for this particular video, we will only cover the part 1 of the obligations of the vendor. So these are the 5 generic obligations of the vendor. First is to take care of the thing after perfection of the contract but prior to delivery. Second is obligation to pay taxes and incidents of the sale. So as a general rule, it will be the seller who will be liable for the taxes and incidental expenses, of course subject to stipulation of the parties. Third is to warrant the thing, but we will not discuss here the warranties. The warranties will be covered by a separate video and we are not going to expound anymore the obligation to pay taxes and incidents because that's as generic as it gets. As a rule, the seller will be the one liable unless there is a stipulation to the contrary. So for this particular video, we will be discussing the obligation to take care of the thing prior to delivery but after perfection of the contract and the obligation to transfer ownership. The part 2 for obligations of the vendor will cover the fifth obligation here which is to deliver the determinate or a specific thing including its fruits from the moment the obligation to deliver arises including its accessions and accessories. So with regards the obligation to take care of the thing after perfection of the contract but prior to delivery, the provisions provide for instances when there will be loss of the thing prior to delivery but after perfection. So if the thing was lost entirely, so ano ulit yung concept natin ng loss na diniscuss under the law on obligations, either it has been completely destroyed or we do not know where it is located or even though we know its location, it can no longer be recovered. So if it is entirely lost, the contract will be without any effect. Or in short, it will extinguish the obligation to deliver. But take note that it is still subject to the generic rules of the law on obligations in the sense that if the loss happened with the fault of the seller, take note the seller is the debtor with regards the obligation to deliver and to take care of the thing. Then, he shall be liable still for damages. So, ang premise ng provision of the contract being without any effect is that the loss happened because of a fortuitous event or without the fault on the part of the debtor. Now, if only there is partial loss, the buyer will still have the option either to withdraw from the contract or to demand the remaining part, paying the price corresponding to the portion that will still be delivered by the seller. Again, subject to the rule that if the loss happened with the fault of the debtor, which is in this case the seller, he is also liable for the corresponding damages. Ngayon, dito sa third, ganun din, good faith on the part of the seller or the debtor with regards the obligation to deliver. If the goods were lost or have perished, whether in whole or in part, but without the knowledge of the seller, kaya siya in good faith, or the material part has already been deteriorated in quality so as to substantially change in character, then there are two options on the part of the buyer. He can treat the sale as avoided or as if it 
is not existing anymore as if it is not existing anymore or rescind the contract of sale that is one way to say that or how it would be interpreted or he can treat it as valid if the contract of sale is divisible and the goods were partially lost or deteriorated only he can treat uh, the existing goods as valid or those which have not deteriorated and it will be binding on the part of the buyer to pay a corresponding price therefore. But take note that letter B as an option will be available only if the contract of sale is divisible in character. Now, so the concept of risk of loss, we've already mentioned this when we compared the contract of sale with the contract of agency to sell. Sabi natin, under the principle of res perit domino or the res perit domino doctrine or literally translated as the thing perishes with the owner. So as a general rule, the risk of loss will be with the owner. And again, sabi natin, ano ang act that will transfer ownership? Tradisyo or delivery. P-R-A-D-I-T-I-O. That's why, as a general rule, prior to delivery, the seller remains to be the owner. He will be liable for the risk of loss. But with regards after delivery, the buyer becomes the owner. As a general rule, because of the delivery, then it will be with the buyer's risk of loss already. So it follows lang the owner. Nevertheless, there are three exceptions provided by law to the res perit domino doctrine. And number one will be a stipulation. So stated otherwise, if the parties prior to delivery agreed that even prior to delivery, the goods are already at the risk of loss of the buyer, valid din yan. Or even after delivery, the goods are still at the risk of loss of the seller, valid din yan. Valid din yan as exception to the res perit domino doctrine. A second exception which will most probably be the question with regards risk of loss will be the concept of a security title. The premise here is that there is already delivery made by the seller to the buyer na supposedly will transfer ownership. But there is an agreement that the seller will retain ownership. But take note, the retention of the ownership is only for the purpose of securing performance by the buyer of his obligation which is usually the full payment of the price. So, ang idea is that there was delivery but there is retention of ownership. But since the retention of ownership is only called a security title, the delivery still transferred the risk of loss to the buyer. And third, if there is delay in delivery, whoever is the one who causes the delay in the delivery will be the one who will bear the risk of loss. So let's take an illustrative example here, which is an actual Supreme Court case. So on January 1, 2020, B Bookstore sold to Attorney X law books for the latter's library for a price of 350,000 pesos, where Attorney X will pay 100,000 pesos upon delivery. And the balance will be paid on December 31, 2020. Delivery was already made, but it was mentioned in the contract that the ownership over the books does not pass to Attorney X until full payment of the price. So my retention of ownership kahit nakapag-deliver na. On June 30, 2020, after delivery but before due date of the balance of the purchase price, 
The office of Attorney X was destroyed by fire together with the books purchased from B Bookstore. Attorney X now argues that the ownership was retained by B Bookstore, which is correct. So that's following the res perit domino doctrine. The B Bookstore should bear the risk of loss and he, Attorney X, is no longer liable for the balance. Is he correct? Is Attorney X correct? Well, he did. While it is true that as a general rule, we follow res perit domino doctrine or the thing perishes with the owner, and the owner technically is B bookstore still kasi nga may retention of ownership, take note that the retention of the ownership here is only for the purpose of securing full payment on the part of attorney X, which means that the title retained by B Bookstore is only called a security title. And as we have mentioned, since the books are already delivered, they will still be at the buyer's risk of loss, despite the security title that exists on the part of the seller, as an exception to the res perit domino doctrine. So since attorney X already bears the risk of loss because of the delivery, he remains to be liable for the balance. Now, dito rin papasok yung importance of distinguishing a sale or return and a sale on approval, trial, or satisfaction. Kasi nga, yung transfer of ownership or the transfer of the risk of loss will depend on the type of sale. So, hindi ito mahirap tandaan. This is really a matter of English. So, sale or return. Yan ang sabi. So, in a sale or return, the goods are delivered to the buyer. So, the buyer becomes the owner upon delivery. Kasi nga, may sale. But the buyer has an option to return the goods instead of paying the price. But take note that upon delivery, the ownership already passes to the buyer. Meron lang siyang right to return or revest the ownership to the seller by returning or at least tendering the goods within the time fixed in the contract or if there is no such time fixed within a reasonable period of time. So again, sale or return. Kaya kapag dinilever na kay buyer, without the buyer at least communicating the intention to return the goods, the buyer already owns the goods already delivered. Kasi nga, sale or return. That's why in this case, the goods will be at the buyer's risk already. So the buyer bears the risk of loss being the owner once the goods have already been delivered. Unlike in a sale on approval or on trial or on satisfaction, the delivery of the goods is precisely for inspection only or for the buyer to try the goods or to determine whether he or she will buy the goods. Kaya walang nagiging transfer of ownership. The purpose of delivery is only for the buyer to inspect whether he will approve or try. Kaya nga, ang alternative term ay sale on trial. Or it meets the requirements that he will be needing. Kaya sale on satisfaction. So, in this case, there will be delivery of the goods, similar to sale or return, but there is no transfer of ownership. As such, prior to approval on the part of the buyer, then the risk of loss remains with the seller, which is still the owner even after delivery. Take note that in a sale on approval or on trial or on satisfaction, the ownership passes to the buyer 
when he signifies his approval or acceptance to the seller or does any other act adopting the transaction or contrary to the seller's right. So, kunwari, diniliver na sa kanya yan on trial, dapat ititesting-testing lang niya. Tapos, binenta niya sa ibang tao. That will be deemed an acceptance already because that is an act which overtly shows that he is adopting the transaction or that it is a sale already. Or, if there was no return of the goods or without giving any notice of rejection within the period agreed upon by the parties or the time fixed for the return of the goods or if there is no such agreement within a reasonable time. So in short, meron ding deemed acceptance on the part of the buyer already. If the period agreed upon expired or there is no period but after a reasonable length of time, only then will the goods be at the risk of the buyer. Kaya nagmamatter kasi ang sale or return at sale on approval parehong may delivery. Pero sa sale or return, there is transfer of ownership upon delivery. In sale on approval, wala pa unless any of the things here happens or there is deemed acceptance on the part of the buyer. Ngayon, another obligation of the seller is to transfer ownership. So sabi natin, the seller need not be the owner in order for a contract to be valid. The seller is not required to be the owner at the time of sale. The requirement is that the seller has the right to transfer ownership at the time the obligation to deliver arises only. And in fact, the seller need not be the owner. Magiging valid pa rin ang kontrata, particularly kung meron siyang authority, whether the authority comes from the owner himself as an agent or from a statutory authority like a guardian or a liquidator or an executor, administrator, or coming from a judicial order like a sheriff, or in case of notary public, a statutory authority. This is different when we compare it again with a pledge or a mortgage, where there is a requirement for validity that the pledger or mortgagor is the absolute owner of the thing at the time the contract was entered into. Now, ano ngayon ang mangyayari if the seller is not the owner? So, tatlo ang characters mo dito. Meron kang owner of the thing, the seller who is not the owner of the thing, and the buyer who buys it from the seller. So, tatlo. Again, tatlo. Owner of the thing, Seller who is not the owner and the buyer. So as a general rule, the buyer will acquire no better title to the goods than the seller had. In short, kung kayang bawiin ng owner from the seller yung goods, kaya rin bawiin ng owner from the buyer yung goods na binenta sa kanya ni seller. Because as a rule, wala siyang better right or better title. He is subject to the same actions and rights that the owner may have had against the seller himself. Now, that rule is subject to five particular exceptions. So, in all these exceptions, the buyer actually acquires a better title compared to the seller. Kasi dito, he acquires a good title to the object or the goods, even if the seller is not the owner. Or stated otherwise, if the sale would fall under any of these five exceptions, the owner can no longer recover from the buyer. 
Kahit pa meron siyang karapatan supposedly to recover from the seller, hindi na niya pwedeng bawiin yung goods or yung things from the third party buyer. So the first exception will be there is authority coming from the owner such as an agent. So even if the agent will become the seller and he is not the owner but he is authorized to do so, then the contract of sale will be binding upon the seller or the owner also. In such case, yung pinagbentahan ni agent, si buyer, hindi na pwedeng bawiin ni principal owner yung thing or goods na binenta ng agent niya. Second exception, sabi nga natin kanina, if there will be a statutory or judicial authority to sell, such as a guardian, executor, administrator, or court sheriff. So, pag sila ang nagbenta, they are the sellers, but they are not the owners. Nevertheless, it is a valid sale, and the buyer will acquire good title to the object or the thing. Subject of a contract of sale. And third, will be in cases of estopel. Now, there are two kinds of estopel here. One pertains to the owner, which we call estopel in pais, which by his conduct or representation, he led the buyer to believe that the seller had authority to sell. So, by the concept of estopel, hindi na niya pwedeng bawiin ang kanyang misrepresentation made to the buyer and recover the goods from the buyer. On the part of the seller, on the other hand, pinagmukha niyang siya ang may-ari. By his actions, he led the buyer to believe that he is the actual owner of the thing. And eventually, he actually becomes the owner of the object or the thing. He will now be stopped by his deed, misrepresenting that he is the owner. So whatever ownership he acquires over the thing itself will be transferred to the buyer by operation of law. Ang requirement lang dyan, the goods have already been delivered to such buyer. Let's take an illustrative example here para we can visualize it better. S sold to B a cell phone which belongs to O. So si S ang seller, si B ang buyer, si O ang owner. The owner of the cell phone and in this particular case, si O din ay tatay ni S. So assuming B, knowing that the cell phone belongs to O, as the latter if he was really selling it through S. Siyempre, siyempre yan, personal niyang tinanong. Kasi kunwari, tinawagan ni B si O, siyempre hindi sasagot kasi nga hawak niya yung cellphone. Kaya tinanong niya ng personal, talaga bang pinabibenta mo kay S yung cellphone mo? Kasi alam niyang kay O yung cellphone. And O said yes. So by his representation, even in fact there is no such authority, he can no longer go back from his misrepresentation. He can no longer go back from such misrepresentation. So eventually, kung kunwari itong si S, hindi naman nirimit kay O yung proceeds ng pinagbentahan ng cellphone, hindi na pwedeng bawiin ni O yung cellphone from B. Because he will now be stopped because he led the buyer to believe that S had authority to sell or what we call S to pel in pais. Or in short, or otherwise stated, B will acquire good title to the cell phone already. And there can be no recovery on the part of O anymore. Now, on the other hand, assuming na hindi tinawagan ni B si O at hindi niya talaga alam na si O ang may-ari ng cellphone, so binili niya. B bought it from S 
believing that S is actually the owner because of his actions. Dahil binibenta niya. That's why B believed that S was actually the owner of the thing. Eventually, namatay si O. And S actually became the owner being the sole heir. So, minana niya yung ownership coming from O. In this case, Pwede, ba niyang, pwede pa ba niyang i-recover yung cellphone from B? Hindi na. Because he is now stopped by his deed when he led B to believe that he was the owner at the time of sale. And whatever ownership that he acquired from O by virtue of succession because of the death of O, it will automatically be transferred to B. By operation of law. In this case, who is stopped is the seller. That's why we call it estopel by deed. So these are the two estopels that we will constitute that will constitute an exception to the general rule. That's why in both cases here, the buyer acquires good title to the cell phone. And it cannot be recovered from him anymore. Now, the fourth exception, which is a very common concept na tinatanong sa board and even in the bar exam, will be the sale of an apparent owner. There are three particular requisites to this one. Number one is that there is apparent ownership. The buyer is in good faith and acquires the goods for value. Ang idea lang natin ng concept ng good faith dito is that he does not have any knowledge of the defect in the seller's title or he didn't know na iba ang may-ari, na hindi si seller ang may-ari. And third, there is a law from which an apparent ownership comes from, which may be PD 1529 or the Property Registration Decree. Kasi dito, under the Property Registration Decree, we follow what we call the Torrent System. And under the Torrent System, we follow what we call the Mirror Principle. The premise of Mirror Principle is that if there is a title, whatever is written on the title is everything you need to know regarding the property. Hindi mo na kailangang mag-imbestiga na yung nakasulat ba doon na owner, siya ba talaga ang may-ari? Paano niya ba na-acquire yung title? Hindi na kailangan. Basta kung siya yung nakapangalan doon, by virtue of the property registration decree, he is presumed to be the owner of such thing. However, this presumption or principle will not apply with regards those who are required to exercise utmost diligence, like banks, banko. So, kailangan pa rin imbistigahan if they are required to exercise utmost diligence. The Factors Act, which is technically just the law on agency. So, kung merong SPA or Special Power of Attorney, at nakalagay doon na may kapangyarihan ng agent to enter into a contract of sale, then that suffices already. Hindi na kailangan imbestigahan pa ng buyer kung talaga bang authorized ang agent to sell. Kasi there is a document stating that he is in fact authorized to sell. Or Article 1518 with regards negotiable instruments or negotiable documents of title. So a good example here will be a warehouse receipt. So for example, kung ikaw ay nagdeposit ng goods sa isang warehouse, bibigyan ka ng warehouse receipt. Kung kunwari, nakalagay doon that the goods are deliverable to the bearer at prinisenta yung warehouse receipt ng isang tao who is not the actual owner dahil napulot lang niya somewhere valid. It will become apparent ownership also because it is covered by a negotiable document of title.
So all three requisites must be present in order for the buyer to acquire good title to the property. In which case, whatever is the object can no longer be recovered by the true owner from the buyer in good faith. Ang tawag din natin dito on the part of the buyer is an innocent purchaser for value or simply just a buyer in good faith. So again, apparent ownership, there is a law from which the apparent ownership comes from and the buyer is in good faith and acquires the thing for value. So let's give an illustrative example. This is an actual bar exam question which came from an actual Supreme Court case. Hindi ko nga alam kung bakit laging abogado ang ina-example na gumagawa ng mali kahit sa bar exams. So O, the owner of a lot gave to S in the actual bar exam question is spouse yan. Pero to simplify it na lang, so si O ang may-ari ng isang lupa. Binigay niya yung title kay S na abogado niya for safekeeping purposes only because O was going abroad. Ang nangyari dito, S executed a forged deed of sale and made it appear that O sold to him the said lot. So armed with the forged deed of sale, si S pumunta ngayon sa register of deeds and was able to secure a title in his name. Ngayon, yung titulo ng lupa na kapangalan na kay S. Binenta niya ngayon kay B. So when O returned, nakita niya si B who was already making constructions over the lot that he owned and learned that it was sold to B by S. So ang tanong dito, can O recover the lot from B? Well, no. This will constitute the exception of apparent ownership. Kasi in this case, there is apparent ownership. Dahil yung titulo ng lupa, nung time na binenta ni S kay B, ang titulo ay nakapangalan na kay S. And again, ang sabi natin, there is a law from which the apparent ownership comes from, which is the property registration decree. And ang sabi natin, under the property registration decree, following the mirror principle, si B is no longer required to investigate whether S validly acquired the title. Kanino galing or whether he is in actual possession, hindi na kailangan. Kasi nga, whatever is written on the title can be presumed correct on the part of B, who is required only to exercise the diligence of a good father of a family or ordinary diligence. So dahil meron ng apparent ownership, dahil sa title, at merong law from which apparent ownership comes from, ang titignan na lang natin is be a buyer in good faith. And for value, take note, in the problem, nothing indicates or nothing would suggest that B was in bad faith or that he knew that S is not the actual owner. So the presumption of good faith will be applicable in this case. So all three requisites being present, B will acquire good title to the lot and the remedy of O would be to go after S. He will no longer be allowed to recover it from B. Because B can be termed here now as the innocent purchaser for value who acquires good title to the thing. Note, however, that if B was aware, so kunwari, finorch na nga ang deed of sale, tapos sabi ni S kay B, O B, binibenta ko itong lupa na to, sabi niya, O di ba kay O yan, hindi naman ikaw ang may-ari, oo, ang ginawa ko, finorch ko yung deed of sale, tapos pinagmukha kong ako ang may-ari. Tapos ang sabi ni B, wow, cool, so binili pa rin niya. So in that case, 
B is not in good faith. Kasi he knew that O is the actual owner. In that case, hindi mag-a-apply yung exemption ng apparent ownership. Kasi mawawala yung requisite na good faith. Mawawala yung requisite na good faith. As such, the general rule will apply. B acquires no better title than S. So if O will be allowed to recover from S, O will be allowed to recover the said lot from B as well. Kasi nga, no better right will be acquired. Now, the fifth and last exception to the general rule that the buyer supposedly acquires no better title than the seller will be purchases that are made from a merchant store, a market, or a fair in good faith and for value. The purpose of this exemption is to facilitate commercial transactions so as not to degrade the trust in sales made through such stores. Kasi ang idea, kung wala yung exemption na to, kung yung binibili mo, for example, sa Green Hills na store, or sa kahit anong tindahan, baka matakot ang mga tao na pag doon sila bumili, tapos nakaw pala ang pinanggalingan, mababawi din sa kanila. Kaya this exemption was created precisely to secure the trust of the buyers in the market para they can freely buy and know that they will acquire good title to whatever they are buying. If it came from a merchant store, market, or fair. So we have an illustration here. X stole the cell phone of O and sold it to S Trading Incorporated. So si X ang nagnakaw. Si O ang owner. S Trading Incorporated is in Green Hills. So B then bought the same cell phone from S Trading Incorporated at nakita later on ni O na nakaibi na yung cell phone niya. Ang tanong dito, can O recover the cell phone from B? Hindi na. Even if supposedly X, the one who stole the cell phone, did not acquire good title, and as a general rule, dapat ganun din yung mangyayari kay S Trading Incorporated, which acquires no better title, and supposedly kay B, who acquires no better title than S Trading, but it was purchased from a merchant store, S Trading Incorporated, so since it was purchased from a merchant store, even though S Trading did not really validly acquire title because it came from a thief, X, nevertheless, the buyer in good faith acquires a good title to the cell phone and O will no longer be allowed to recover. Ngayon, itong fifth exception lang will normally be discussed side by side with Article 559 of the Civil Code. Because under Article 559, which is technically under property modifications and no longer under the law on sales, when a person who is the owner of the movable property lost the movable property or was unlawfully deprived of its possession, he is given the right to recover without any question. As long as you are able to prove that you are the owner of the movable which was lost or unlawfully deprived, meron ng right to recover. Ang nagiging second question na lang dito, if the possessor now possesses it in good faith, will he be entitled to reimbursement? Ang magiging sagot naman dyan will be dependent. If the possessor acquired it through a public sale or at a public sale, then he will be entitled to reimbursement before returning the thing to the owner of such movable property. But if he did not acquire it in good faith at a public sale, 
then he is not entitled to reimbursement. But you will note, whether my liability for reimbursement or wala, there is a right to recover, there is really a right to recover. Kahit walang liability for reimbursement or melon, there is a right to recover. So let's take this illustrative example, which was an actual bar exam question. So Rita was the owner of a valuable painting which was stolen from her house. Later on, she saw the same painting in the house of Mario. When inquired, Mario said that he acquired the same from a gallery auction. Can Rita recover the painting from Mario? Well, the answer is yes, no doubt. Since Rita is the owner of a movable property who was unlawfully deprived of its possession because it was stolen from her house, as such, under Article 559, she will have the right to recover its possession. Ang second question na nga lang dito, is Mario entitled to reimbursement? Dito lang naglagay ng konting twist yung examiner sa bar. Kasi apparently, walang entitlement to reimbursement because a gallery auction is a private sale and not a public sale since it is exclusively by invite only. But if it was acquired from a public sale, then Mario would be entitled to reimbursement. Nevertheless, sabi nga natin, whether or not Mario is entitled to reimbursement, Rita has the right to recover because she was unlawfully deprived of its possession. And that ends the obligations of the vendor part one.